All right, in this screencast, we're gonna build a small Redux to-do application. We're gonna do this with jQuery, and then in the next video, we're really gonna start integrating React into the mix. So what we're gonna do right now, I'm just gonna make a copy of the last application that I had, which was the Redux uh, counter. And then I'm going to copy that into a folder called Redux to-dos. I'm going to CD into Redux to-dos, and I'm just going to open this up in Sublime. I take a look at the files that I have, it looks a lot like my counter code. But what I want to do now is change up this HTML, and I want to change up some of that JavaScript, but I still want to keep these three scripts right here. So what I'm going to start off with is an unordered list that we'll call to-dos. And inside of here, we're going to start appending some list items. But in order to do that, we need a form. So I'm going to make a form that pretty much goes nowhere, and I'll give this a label let me spell that correctly, a label for a task. And we'll say task. And then we'll give this an input with a type of text. We'll make sure the name is task and the ID is task. And finally, we'll just make one button that says add a to-do. And when we're done with that, we should be able to focus on our JavaScript. So let's just quickly open this up in the browser. We shouldn't really see much right here except for a little form to add a to-do. But what we're going to do now is work on some of the JavaScript here. So we need to think about what our initial state looks like. And our initial state should be relatively similar to what we had before. It's going to be an object, but we're going to have a property called todos, which starts off as some empty array. And then we're going to need a way to keep track of each to-do that we create. So I'll make a property called ID and set it to be zero. We then want our root reducer to start with some kind of initial state, which looks good, but let's do this again from scratch. By default, we want to see what the action type is. So we are going to switch on the action type. We could use if else statements. If you're more comfortable with that, that's totally fine. In the case that we have add to do, we are going to do something. Here we'll add a to do. What other situations might we have? We might want to remove a to do. And when that happens, we'll, uh, we'll do something here. We'll remove a to do. But by default, if it's none of those, let's just return whatever our state is. Keep it real simple for now. Let's go back and take out some of this code that we have right here. We're just going to start with a document.ready. And what do we need to think about with regards to our DOM manipulation? We need to think about when that form is submitted, we need to dispatch the add to do action. So how do we do that? Well, let's start with an event listener on the form. And when that form is submitted, we're going to run a function with some kind of event object. And the first thing we want to do is prevent the default to make sure that the page doesn't refresh. So we'll prevent the default here. And then we want to think about actually grabbing what was typed in in that input. So if you look back at our index.html, this has an ID of task. So we could say something like make our new task to be whatever the ID of task has, which is an input, and its value, whatever the user typed in. We're then going to dispatch an action. We'll call store.dispatch. And what action do we want? Well, remember, all of our actions have to be objects, and they always have to have the key of type. And what do we want to do here? Well, we probably want to add a to-do. But when we think about adding a to-do, we're going to want to grab whatever the user typed in. So we are going to add another key inside of here. We can call that task. And that is going to be some new task. We're going to send this information to the store. So why don't we, for now, just simply put a debugger right here. And let's just return the state. We'll keep it real simple. But when we add a to-do, let's see what we actually dispatch right here. And to keep it real simple, the last thing I'm going to do is just grab that form. And I'm going to trigger the reset event. And this will simply just clear any form values that I have. So one more time. When the form is submitted, don't let the page refresh, grab whatever the user typed in, and send an action to the reducer. Who gets to send those actions? The store. We'll give it a type because they always, always have to have a type. And we'll give it some property called task. We'll see how we use that. So I'll save this right now. I'll head back and refresh the page and open my Chrome DevTools so I can see a debugger happen. I'll go try to add something like eat dinner. When I add that to do, I make it to the root reducer. Great. 
And you can see right here that my action has a property called type as well as a property called task. This is the first time that we're seeing passing additional keys in an action aside from type, but you can pass in whatever you'd like. That's really nice because now our reducer can take that task and put it in to our to-dos in state. There's gonna be a little bit of work to do that, so let's see how we could do that. Your first thought might be something like, let's go take the state and let's just go push in whatever the action and the task property is. Remember, task is what we just got back in our action. But that wouldn't be good. Remember, we always, always wanna keep our functions pure. So what we're gonna do is keep it real simple. Let's start by making some kind of new state. And that's just gonna be a direct copy of state. We're gonna spread out whatever state was. We can then take whatever the ID is of state and increment it because this to-do should have an ID of one and we're starting at zero. What we're then going to do is return an object because remember, our state is always an object. But inside this object, what keys are we going to have? We're going to have whatever new state has that should include any to-dos and an ID. And we're gonna pass in another key of to-dos. Now what we need to do here is make to-dos an array. And what we're gonna do is grab all of the previous to-dos that we had. We're gonna spread out all of those to-dos as well as a new to-do that we're gonna make. Each to-do should be an object that has some kind of task and some corresponding ID. So we'll say that this task is going to be whatever is passed in in the action. And the ID is going to be whatever we're storing in our state. Remember, we've just incremented this by one. So let's go try this out and add a couple to-dos. And let's go see our state change. There's a lot of ES 2015 and even more that we're doing right now. We're spreading out whatever is in state. This is the idea of just making a copy. We're gonna increment that ID by one because remember our to-dos always need a unique ID. We're then going to take that ID and just put it in a new object. I'm being very explicit here, remember. You can always refactor this a little bit, but I wanna go step by step. To-dos is going to be an array, like it always is, but this time it's gonna be whatever was in that state, as well as a new to-do that we're about to make. That's going to include some kind of task and some kind of ID. So let's save this and try it out. I'll refresh the page, head over to the console, and I will go home. Let's go take a look at store.getState. We can see right now that our to-do has a task of go home and an ID of one. Let's try something else. Let's go eat more dinner. When I add that to-do, let's go take a look at our state. And that looks great. Our to-dos now are go home and eat more dinner and we're incrementing the ID. So it looks like we are correctly modifying the state and everything that we're doing is a pure function. We're not overwriting any existing state. We're always starting by making a copy of that state. But now we actually have to put that on the page. So our next step is actually to work with some jQuery. Before we bother resetting all of these form values, why don't we get whatever the current state is at that time? Because remember, after we dispatch that action, we should have our new to-do in Redux state. What we'll then do is make some kind of new list item. This is just going to be a pretty simple jQuery list item. And we're going to give it the text. Uh, this is an object. We'll give that the text of whatever our new text is that we got. In this case, that's the task. What else do we have to do here? We are going to append that new list item to our ID of to-dos. So we're gonna append that new list item. And we could be a little more particular and actually give these a dollar sign so that we know that these are jQuery elements that we're making and working with. So I'll refresh the page. I'll go eat. That looks good. I'll go sleep and I'll go keep recording more. That looks good. Let's go take a step back and see how we made this all work. We started with some initial state. Our initial state contains not just a counter now, but multiple properties, an array of to-dos, each of which will be an object with its own ID and some kind of way of keeping track of what that ID is over time. We could try to put the ID here for the first time and change it, but I'm just keeping it real simple and moving it out over here. Remember that we can't create a store without a reducer. So we have our reducer right here. When you start working on larger applications, your reducers are moved to separate files and folders and your store is in another file. And even some of your action creators, those functions that make actions live in another file. 
but I'm putting it all in one so we can work through this line by line. What we're going to do in the reducer is see what the action type is. If it's add to do, make a copy of the state like we always do, increment the ID property, and then return a new object with whatever was in that state before, which is going to have a new ID, as well as the to do's property, which is whatever all those old to do's were, and a new to do with a task property and an ID property. The task is going to be whatever the user typed in that comes in in the action. And the ID is going to be whatever we just changed our ID to be. We're always going to increment that by one. In the case of remove to do, well, we haven't got there yet. But in the case of a action where it's not add to do or remove to do, we're just going to return the state. On line 22, we make our store. And whenever we make a store, we always have to pass in that root reducer. And here, we actually write some jQuery. When the DOM loads and a form is submitted, stop it from being refreshed, grab whatever the user typed in, and dispatch an action. Where's that dispatch coming from? Our Redux store. Who gets to dispatch the actions? The Redux store. What are actions? Objects that always contain a key of type. In our case, we're dispatching add to do, and we're passing in a property of task, which will come in as action.task, and this new task, which is whatever the user typed in in the input. When we're done with that, we're going to go see what our Redux state looks like. We're going to make a new list item with whatever the user typed in, and we're going to append that new list item to the page. Now, you might be wondering, why would we want to get the current state at that point? Now, if you wanted to do something like append new information to the page or change anything that we need in the state, we'd want to do that. And you might be wondering, well, when am I actually going to be doing that? We're going to need to know specifically what the state is when we start actually deleting those new to-dos. So right now, we're going to get that state but we might not be using it just yet. We're going to see where to use it in the next step. What I'd love to do right now is every time that I make a to-do, like eat and sleep, I'd like to have a button next to it that I can click to delete those to-dos. And each one of these buttons should have an ID that corresponds to whatever ID that to-do has. So how do I do that? Well, we got to make a button. Let's go make a new button. And this button right here is going to be, once again, a jQuery button and it's going to have the text of an X. And it's going to have an ID property, which is whatever current state dot ID is. Hmm, so what are we doing here? Current state dot ID just refers to whatever the latest ID property is in our Redux state. And what that means is that each time we make a to-do, we'll make a list item and a button with whatever the ID is in our state. That might seem like a lot. Let's go to the browser and see what's happening. In the Elements tab, let's take a look at what's inside of To-Dos. I'm going to eat. Let's open this up. If we take a look at our list item, well, where's our button? Hmm, looks like we forgot to append our button. So the last thing we want to do is grab our new list item. And we actually can do this right here. And we're going to append that new button. Let's put the button inside of here. So that way we can see that. Let's try this one more time. We're going to eat. Let's take a look inside of here and notice that there is an ID of one. Let's go try to sleep. Notice inside of here, there's an ID of two. Well, where's that ID coming from? If we take a look at our store state, we can see the ID is two, which means if we make another to do, we should expect the state to have an ID of three, and we should expect this button to also have an ID of three. You could use a data attribute or something. I'm just using an ID to keep it real simple. But what's the purpose of this ID? Why do we need to uniquely identify every single to-do? Well, when we remove a to-do, we need to know which one to remove. So what we're going to do is add an event listener on those buttons. Inside of this form, we could make a new event listener, but we're going to use a little bit of event delegation. We are going to say that for any unordered list, when there is a click on any button inside of here that can be created at any point, run a function with that event object. What we'll do right now is dispatch an action. We are going to dispatch the action with a type of remove to do, and we need to pass in some kind of ID. We're going to use jQuery to get whichever button was clicked, and we are going to get whatever its ID attribute is. We're going to stop right here and throw a debugger and make sure that we make it to remove to do. This is a really good way to work. Dispatch an action, see if you're getting the data that you want, and just return the state. 
We're not actually removing anything here, but we just want to see whatever our state is at that point. So I'll refresh the page, I'll eat, I'll click on this button, and it looks like we're successfully making it to remove to do. But what's happening here? Inside of our action, we have a type of remove to do and an ID of one. Where is that ID of one coming from? Well, event.target refers to that button that was clicked. And that button that was clicked has an attribute called ID. Let's take a look at that. That refers to this attribute ID right over here. What we've done is sent a string to Redux because our ID is turned into a string. So we're going to have to deal with converting that string to a number. So what do we do with this ID? Well, what we'd like to do is go through all of our to-dos and remove the one with an ID of one. So you might be thinking once again, oh, that's easy. Well, we can just simply get that specific ID. We can do something like state dot to do's dot splice. Uh, we just want to remove one thing starting from whatever index that we got. So what's our starting point? Well, that's going to be action dot ID. And then we'll remove one thing. And we'll be very fancy. We'll convert this to a number to make sure that we get the right index. And then we'll return our state. Pause the video and see if you can figure out what's wrong here. Well, let's see. I'm going to save this. I'll refresh the page. I'll eat. I'll click on this right here and take a look at my state. And it's still there. Hmm, looks like that's still there, that ID of 0. Well. What I did here is just simply try to splice from my to-dos and return that state. Not only is this code incorrect, but the function is also impure. So I don't even want to bother debugging this because I'm directly mutating or changing my state. A better way to do this is to make a copy of our to-dos. And how can we do that? How can we take our to-dos and make a copy of it without that specific one inside of it? We could write a for loop, but there's also a really nice array method that helps us do that, and that's filter. We're going to say, grab all of the to-dos where the ID property is not whatever ID we passed in right now. And then we can simply return a copy of the state with our to-dos. This is the same thing as doing to-dos, to-dos right here. We're just going to pass in an object, and right here, our to-dos. So what we're doing here is simply filtering out any of those to-dos that don't have that ID. Let's save this and refresh the page. We're not actually going to see it removed from the page because that's jQuery's job. But let's go take a look at what our Redux state is right now. We have an array where ID is two, and we have these two. When I click on eat and take a look at my state, notice that that one is actually gone. And my ID still stays the same. I've used filter to make a copy of this array. And you're going to see very commonly when you do remove operations with Redux that filter is a wonderful operation when you're working on an array. Because filter is a pure function. It always returns a new array, just like map. You'll see map as well when you do things like updating, which I really encourage you to try to implement on these to-dos. So the last part that we need here is to actually have some jQuery remove those specific to-dos. And that really just requires a little bit of jQuery. What we're going to do is get whatever was clicked on, the event.target, we're going to go up to its parent, which is the list item, and we're going to remove it. So I'm going to save that. We're going to go back here. Let's try to first take a look at our state. An array with 0 and an ID of 1. Let's go eat. Let's go sleep. Let's go home. Let's go take a look at our state. And we have three items inside and an ID of 3. That looks good. The ID is incrementing. It's staying at 3 so that the next time it will go up to 4. Let's go remove these. Looks like jQuery is working. So all those three things are being removed. Looks like I have nothing left in my to-dos array, but my ID is three. So how about another? We can see right here, we have an ID of four and the to-dos right there. One thing that you really want to try to make sure is that you're not mutating state. And sometimes you'll get some UI issues around that, but sometimes you may actually find yourself changing state and realizing that it still all kind of works. So what I want to introduce is a wonderful Chrome extension called the Redux DevTools. And what we're going to look at is this second one right here. I have this already installed, so feel free to take a look through the documentation and install the Redux DevTools. It's a Chrome extension, so grab it from the Chrome Web Store. If you're using Firefox, grab it from the Firefox add-ons. What you want to do right after you do that is simply add this line right here to where we call create store. The second thing that you want to do, I'm doing this in Chrome, is I'll go over here, 
and I'll click on this extension right here. And I'll go to Manage Extensions. Inside of here, you want to make sure that you have this checked right there, allow access to file URLs. Since we're just running things off the file system, we want to make sure that Redux DevTools still picks up what we've done. So back over here, once you've installed it, you want to make sure once again that once it's installed, you click on this right here, Manage Extensions, and make sure that Allow Access to File URLs is clicked. You could also just run this on a server and you'll be fine. We're then going to grab this line right here, and we're going to see the Redux DevTools in action. And where does that go? Take a look again when you call Create Store. So when we call Create Store, we're going to pass in this line right here. This is not something you're going to memorize. This is something you're going to find yourself copying and pasting quite a bit. So if we have this loaded, we should be able to go back and we should have a tab with Redux that has this item right here. Now, what's really cool about this is using this application, we can actually see changes in our Redux state. So I'm going to eat some dinner. Well, not now, but hopefully after I record this. What I just did is dispatched an action with a task of eat dinner, and here's what my state looks like right now. That's pretty awesome. I'll bring this out a little bit so we can see in a little bit more detail. I'll move this over here, and I'll go actually hide my Chrome DevTools. So I'll bring this over here. I'm going to click on this right here, and what you can see here is that we just dispatched that remove to do. What I'll do now is just add another to do. So once again, I'll eat and I'll remove, I'll sleep and I'll remove and I'll go home. And we can see all of these tasks that have happened. What I can do here as well is simply act as if I didn't do that. I can skip that. And if you take a look that the ID right now is back to two. Let's go unskip that and it's back to three. Now, since I'm using jQuery for DOM manipulation, things are a little different. But if you want to see changes in your state, you can always see what would happen if you didn't run these actions. This is the idea of time traveling that we spoke about a little while ago. You can see that as I change these, my state actually changes. What's really cool about this is you can go back in your application and see what changes to state have been made. If we want to look at this right here, it's a little bit of a more verbose way of seeing all the things that have happened. If I actually reset everything, I can go back to my default state. Now, since I'm using jQuery for DOM manipulation, it's really hard to keep jQuery and Redux in sync. This is where we're going to start bringing React back into the mix, because if we can sync up React with our Redux state, we should be able to not only make sure we're writing pure functions, but also see changes in our React application when we change our Redux state. So don't worry too much if you're not super comfortable with these dev tools. I just wanted to introduce them at a very high level because when we start connecting React, we'll see it all come back together. So one more time, let's go over the code that we wrote. Inside our index.html, we have a list of to-dos. Here, we're just going to append some list items. In our form, we don't go anywhere. We see what the user types in with an ID of task. And then we have a button to submit the form. We then have some jQuery, some Redux, and our own script.js file. We make some initial state, and we have a reducer, which accepts that initial state as a default parameter. When we add a to-do, we make a copy of the state, add one to the ID, and return a new object with that updated ID and whatever else was in state, and overwrite the to-dos property with all the other to-dos and a new one that we make. Every to-do has a task property and an ID property. If you're not sure where some of these things are coming from, throw debuggers and see how data flows through a Redux app. How does it work? Actions are dispatched. They're dispatched by a store. Once the action is dispatched, it goes to the reducer and some new state is returned. How do we even figure out what our initial state is? We call create store with our reducer. What's this whole thing here doing? Grabbing our Redux dev tools. Those instructions are right here. If you Google Redux dev tools, you want to make sure you're using this one specifically. Next off, we have a little bit of jQuery handling some DOM manipulation. We're really going to bring React into the mix in a little bit because it can sync up much more nicely with Redux. But you can use Redux with jQuery, with Angular, with Backbone, with whatever you'd like. It's just a centralized place to manage your state. What we have here is a little bit of event delegation. When an unordered list listens for a click and it's on a button, this way we don't have to place an event listener on every button and we can save some more space, we are going to dispatch an action. It's going to be called remove to do. 
and it's going to have an additional property called ID, which is whatever button was clicked on's ID attribute. We're then going to go to the parent of that element, which is a list item, and we're going to remove it. This is the jQuery, and this right here is the Redux. Remember, we want to keep our Redux state in sync with anything that we're doing in the DOM. So whenever we remove elements, we also want to make sure we remove them from our Redux state. The next thing we're listening for, which we started with, is that form submission. Stop the page from refreshing, grab what the user typed in, dispatch an action of add to do, and send to Redux whatever the user typed in. We then want to get that current state so we know what that ID is so we can add it to a button. But before we make the button, we make a list item with some text. We then make a button with a simple text of X and an ID attribute of whatever the Redux state ID is. That's important because we need to know which to do to remove. We then append that button to the list item, and then we append the list item to our to-dos. And finally, we reset our form values. So here's what it should look like when we have it working. We should be able to eat. We should be able to sleep with a P, and we should be able to get rid of these right here. So that's it for our to-do application. I encourage you to implement functionality for updating so you can use functions like map to make sure you're still using pure functions. And in a little bit, we're going to bring back React. We're going to connect it with Redux. And that's where things really get fun. I'll see you in the next screencast.